South of the Murkwater construction site is the Suffolk County Charter School. You often find a super mutant behemoth lurking about outside the school when you approach, so be careful. Outside, there's a sign with what appears to be a 200-year-old message from the school that reads, Education is what survives when what has been learnt has been forgotten. Yes, true words. There's also a sandwich board standing outside the main doors advertising the Halloween festivities, which apparently also has remained undisturbed for 200 years. The wind must not blow in this corner of the Commonwealth. Inside, the school is a complete wreck, as we have come to expect here in Fallout 4. As soon as you enter, you get attacked by ghouls. But wait, let's pause that. These ghouls look different. Is it just me, or do they look rather pinkish? I mean, I know ghouls are supposed to be rotting and bloody and gnarly and bloated and nasty, but these guys look like cotton candy, they're so pink. After clearing the pink ghouls, you find that most of the doors on this first floor are chained shut. There's a Protectron charging station with the terminal that'll allow you to hack a Protectron and turn into a follower if you want. Through the reception to the right is the principal's office. We know this is the principal's office thanks to a holotape that she kindly left behind. Good morning, teachers and students. It is another great week here at Suffolk County Charter School. I hope everyone is getting their costumes together for the annual Halloween festival. I would like to take this opportunity to remind you that no outside food is to be brought on campus as of this week. This goes for faculty as well as students. We have received generous donations for our implementation of the Nutrition Alternative Paste Program. We owe our benefactors strict adherence to the rules they have set forth. Thank you for your attention. This is Principal Hudson, signing off. It looks as if the principal of this school has volunteered her charter school for a government experiment. In fact, this is a joint experiment between the United States government and the vault Tech Corporation. We learned that from the Fallout 4 official strategy guide. In her terminal, we find a thank you note from Dr. Jerry Gibson, who must be a vault Tech representative, thanking the principal for allowing them to experiment on the students of the school, and also warning her that if the students don't comply, that they are are going to rescind the funding that they have given to the school. The only reason Principal Hudson agreed to allow vault Tech and the government to experiment on the children with this food supplement is because they agreed to give the school a generous sum of funding. So what is this food supplement that they're talking about? Well, if you go back to the reception area, you find a tray of pink paste. Even more disturbing than that, we find pink finger and hand prints all over the place, on the countertop, on the nearby terminal. Someone has been eating this pink paste, and this someone is very messy. Incidentally, this terminal on the reception area doesn't work. The first line of the script loads, but the rest of the terminal entries do not load, if there are any. This isn't just my own personal bug, I did research on this, even the wiki notes that this terminal seems to be malfunctioning. As you continue to explore the first floor, you find a larger classroom with more of these pink ghouls inside. The pink slimy handprints are everywhere. You find pink splatter all over the place and pink handprints on the walls and even the ceiling. This room is the English room. The terminal belongs to Henry Smith, the head of the English department. In the terminal, he complains to Principal Hudson about the flavorless pink goo. He says that it's inhumane and demoralizing. We learned that since the pink paste was introduced to the students here, that more and more students have been sent to the principal's office for misbehavior. He says that the students are getting restless. We learn from a random encounter involving raiders that pink paste may even be addictive. Henry Smith ends by saying, Also, I could almost swear that everyone seems a little bit pinker after just a week of eating the stuff. He suggests that they end this experiment and find alternative ways to get funding for the school. The weird thing about this terminal is that the terminal is labeled Mr. Davidson Terminal, but when you go into the terminal, it says user login, 
Henry Smith. So it's clear that this terminal belongs to Henry Smith, not Mr. Davidson, and the letter draft is signed Mr. Smith, not Mr. Davidson. The weird thing is that if you explore the Vault-Tec regional headquarters, you actually do find a terminal there for Mr. Davidson. Maybe this is something else that's linking the experiment going on here to Vault-Tec, but more likely, I think it's probably just a mistake. My bet is that they copied some sort of terminal entry from another dungeon and pasted it into this one, and then went into it to edit the fields manually to make it customized for this school, and they simply forgot a few fields. That's what I'm guessing. At last, we get a fuller picture of what went on here. Could it be that these feral ghouls were the students? Are the ghouls that you're killing at this very moment really children? I'm not sure there are a few other explanations. After all, all of these ghouls are adult size. Now maybe this is just a limitation of the game. They already have adult sized ghouls made and they probably didn't want to make child sized ghouls just for this school. But it's also possible that these pink ghouls are not the ghouls of the children that once went here, but rather the ghouls of the various teachers that used to teach here. The problem with this theory is that there are already adult-sized skeletons all over the place. We find the principal's skeleton in her classroom. We even find the skeleton of the janitor, complete with his newsboy cap, a bucket, and a mop, lying in the hallway. With dozens and dozens of pink feral ghouls here, could they all be the ghouls of of the adult staff? It seems a little unlikely to me. The third explanation is that since the bombs dropped early in the morning, school may not have even started. It may not have been in session. Maybe the ghouls in this school are not the ghouls of the students who went here, but rather are the ghouls of other wastelanders or other people who happened to stumble upon the Suffolk County Charter School and stayed there because it was a great source of food. We know that the paste didn't turn these people into ghouls because when you eat the food paste, it does not give you any rads. So they must have been feral ghouls before they came here and they've been munching on the pink paste over the past 200 or so years. In any event, when you go down the hallway and around the corner, you find yourself in the cafeteria, clearing the ghouls here, and we actually learn how this stuff was manufactured. Through a door in the back of the cafeteria, we find a big machine with an intake pipe. It appears that there are grinding gears inside the intake pipe. This intake pipe is slathered in the pink paste. Pipes then snake out of this machine all throughout the school. The pipes lead to nozzles in many of the different rooms of the school where students and faculty can twist a pipe to squirt out a bunch of this pink paste onto a cafeteria tray. What's interesting about this setup is that it means that the pink paste is created in the school. You would think that vault Tech or the United States government would make it somewhere else and then ship it to the school. But no, we've got a grinder in this room. We've got a machine that's creating the pink paste. What was it made from? Whatever it is, the children and faculty are forced to eat it as the principal reminds them almost every day. On the podium in this room, before the crumbling floor, we find the second holotape where Principal Hudson again extols the virtues of eating the pink paste. Good morning, teachers and students. It is a fabulous Wednesday here at Suffolk County Charter School. The Glee Club is having their seasonal bake sale today. Stop by and show your support so we can send our team to the regionals. Remember, actual baked goods are forbidden on school grounds, so they will be selling colorful cups for your food paste. Oh, also, we will be having a school assembly during second period tomorrow on the dangers of strangers by Jangles, the moon monkey himself. Once again, we would like to thank our benefactors from the NAPP program for allowing us to have such a big star come and speak to you kids. We owe our benefactors strict adherence to the rules they have set forth. This is Principal Hudson signing off. Have a great day. Now, if this whole story sounds a little familiar, it should. When I went through this school the first time, it reminded me of something in the back of my head, and it wasn't until I began to research this topic that the pieces started to come together. Back in 2012, ABC News did a month-long expose of something they called pink slime. 
They discovered that for a very long time, Beef Products Incorporated, or BPI, was producing a meat-based food additive that was added to ground beef that was sold in grocery stores and given to children in schools. This food additive was made from beef trimmings and other part of the animal that otherwise might have been discarded. This product is what ABC News nicknamed the pink slime. BPI made the pink slime by grinding up all of the beef trimmings and other animal parts, putting it in a centrifuge, and then spinning it rapidly so that all of the fat separated from the remaining meat product. This product was then exposed to ammonia gas, which killed any bacteria that might be living in the slime. It was then flash frozen, which froze the slime in less than two minutes. This flash freezing process destroyed the cell structure of the meat, making it weak and giving it a thin pasty consistency. Now, as disgusting as that sounds, there was nothing inherently unhealthy about the pink slime. BPI, who produced this pink slime, which they prefer to call boneless lean beef trimmings, or BLBT, operated with full approval of the USDA. As is typical with the media, ABC News tried to sensationalize it by hinting at some sort of crony corruption between beef manufacturers and the government by saying that the undersecretary who approved the pink slime for domestic consumption. When Smith stepped down from USDA, BPI's principal supplier appointed her to the board of directors, where she made at least $1.2 million over 17 years. Which is around $70,000 a year. <laughs> That's, that, that is... That is not a sensational salary, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> they, they tried to make it sound like a whole lot of money. But 17 years, that's, that's, not, that's not a huge salary. However, even though the United States approved this product, Canada has banned it since ammonia was used to kill the bacteria, and it's also banned from human consumption in the European Union, although it is used for dog food. I have memories of this event happening back in 2012. It was a huge media sensation. Not only did ABC run some new program on the television every single day, but we found all of these articles cropping up online talking about how horrible this pink slime was. But the United States didn't start using it in 2012. The United States had been using it for a very long time. In fact, in 2012, by the time ABC had aired their program, over 70% of the ground beef that you bought at the store was actually comprised of pink slime. ABC's expose completely devastated BPI and the production of BLBT, the pink slime. The stuff is still used in ground beef today, but now only 5% of the meat product you buy is pink slime. The rest is actual ground beef. The impact of ABC's reporting was devastating on the food production industry. 80% of the sales of ground beef evaporated overnight. BPI had four plants producing this pink slime and they closed three of them. This expose cost the company over $400 million in sales, and they had to lay off 700 workers. 700 people lost their jobs because of ABC's reporting on this issue. Cargill Beef, another company that was producing the pink slime, completely stopped production in California, laid off 50 workers in California, slowed the production of the product at their other beef processing plants, and laid off over 2,000 people. Now, ABC sensationalized the coverage of the pink slime, giving it this sick little nickname and showing horribly disgusting images of beef processing. The problem is that the product wasn't actually bad for you in any way. It was actually a leaner meat. They removed a lot of the fat from it and it was completely free of bacteria. Yes, it was very gross, but it wouldn't actually hurt you. But thousands of people lost their jobs and beef prices rose by 27% by 2014. Only two years after the broadcast of that expose. A woman named Bettina Siegel created a change.org petition that got over 250,000 signatures to ban pink slime from school lunches. And that, I think, is the inspiration for the pink paste in Fallout 4. 
Now in the game, the pink paste, which is actually called food paste, likewise doesn't really have any negative side effects. You can't get addicted to it, so maybe that raider we talked about earlier had exposed himself to a whole lot of it, and it doesn't actually change your skin appearance. What it does is it heals 50 hit points and it gives you plus one endurance for a period of time. Taking an elevator from the basement brings you to floor number two. Rounding the corner, you find a locked door, and unlocking it reveals what I think is the faculty lounge. The pipes coming from the cafeteria, which produces the pink paste, come down from the ceiling into this lounge where the staff can squirt some of the pink paste into their cafeteria trays. I think it's for staff because you find pink handprints all over a cigarette machine. I don't think they'd be giving cigarettes to kids, not even in the Fallout universe. As you explore the school, you find a lot of vault tech lunchboxes. This is great for anyone who's investing perk points in explosives because bottle cap bombs are some of the most powerful bombs in the game, and they require vault tech lunchboxes, which are slightly rare. Additionally, I don't know if it has something to do with the school or not, but when I went through this school on two different characters, each time I walked away with four different robot models from the lunchboxes. So it's a great place to get some of these robot models. Additionally, it's a great place to find overdue books. There are a total of five overdue books in this school alone, and around 10 vault tech lunchboxes. Rounding the corner, we find two more classrooms on the left-hand side. In one of these rooms, we find a simple paper note labeled note, and it's strange. It seems very out of place. The note is from Ralph Jones, regional manager at Vault Tech Industries, who's complaining to Mr. Henderson, saying that Mr. Henderson had failed to meet his quota last month. They're trying to fill vacant spaces in a vault, and these guys are basically salesmen, who are trying to meet their monthly quotas. Apparently, Mr. Henderson has failed to meet his quotas because he was using his time to evangelize, making people uncomfortable. So he was promoting his own religion instead of trying to sell vault spaces. The reason this is strange is because you find this on a teacher's desk in a schoolroom. Why would you find this on a teacher's desk in a schoolroom? Would a teacher be trying to sell vault spaces to children? Or maybe trying to convince them to get their parents to buy a vault space? Maybe but I think it's actually just a mistake, similar to the terminal mistake we found on the first floor and the broken terminal in the reception area. Lots of weird issues with this school. And on the right-hand side, a very large closed door. Opening the door causes all of the feral ghouls inside the room to arise, including a glowing one. It can be a bit of a tough challenge at younger levels. Once you defeat the ghouls, be sure to pick up your copy of Unstoppable's issue number four on the desk in the room, which increases the chance of avoiding all damage from any attack by 1%. We also find the final holotape. Happy Friday all. The NAPP program launched this week with success, but not without problems. I hate to have to throw away your mother's carefully packed lunches, but I am afraid we must put our foot down on this issue. I am assured all of you will get used to the flavor of the pace. Also, I have been informed that flavor varieties will be on their way pending continued success of the program. How exciting! To those complaining, I will repeat. There are absolutely no psychological or physical side effects from participation in the NAPP. Any observed effect is assuredly psychosomatic and possibly related to a lack of trust in the government. Remember, our participation in the NAPP not only helps our school, but in the long run benefits our nation. Thank you for your attention. This is Principal Hudson, signing off. Now in this room, you find an overdue book return terminal, which is really handy. You can return the overdue books that you've found and cash them in for tokens. That's going to reduce the carry weight so that you're not lugging the books around all over the place. The return terminal also allows you to spend your tokens on food paste. Now you're going to want to save most of these tokens for the Boston Public Library because that return terminal actually gives you the Massachusetts Surgical Journal, which is one of the perk magazines that you're going to need to 
complete your collection. But once you get the magazine, there's nothing really valuable in any of these return terminals. Except for the food paste. There are only 16 pieces of food paste in this school, and if you happen to find that random encounter with raiders, you get 5 pieces of food paste off of them. So that's only 21 pieces of food paste that you could get in the entire game. But this book return terminal does give you food paste. Which can be useful because the food paste does give you 1 endurance. Which can come in handy during some situations. Situations. So if you finish all the food paste that you collect from the school, come on back and spend your book return tokens in this terminal. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is the full story of the Suffolk County Charter School. Vault Tech is not content to simply experiment on people in their vaults, no, they must work with the United States government to experiment even on children in school. This was a really interesting dungeon for me, particularly because it was based on such a prominent real event that I remembered from not that long ago. What are your opinions on the Suffolk County Charter School, ladies and gentlemen? What are your thoughts on the pink slime in real life? Let me know in the comments section below. I read all of your comments and I use your comments as inspiration for my future videos. If you'd like to chat about this topic with other like-minded individuals on my Oxhorn Community Discord server, be sure to click on the invitation link in the description of the video below. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video today. Thanks for watching from the bottom of my heart, and I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning with a brand new video.